So conditions have gotten a little bit worse. Oh, big huge wave. Wow. All right, we're getting our indoctrination to the Aegean Sea here. Karen just went on watch. And uh, we left Poros way over there somewhere about two and a half hours ago. So um, we are getting winds of at least 20 up to 25. Let's see what we got, whoa. Right now it's 22, and the boat speed has been in the eights, and a lot of chop. Um, we're getting kind of seas coming in to the side of us. The wind is almost pretty much right on our beam, perpendicular to us, which um, is uncomfortable, but it's not as uncomfortable as if we were um, close hauled and having to beat into the waves. The waves are kind of coming to the side of us and rolling the boat when it does, but not, we don't have to slam into the waves, so. But taking a water over the bow, we got two reefs in the jib and two reefs in the main. As you can see here, whoa. whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would be me falling over. Uh, can't see it too well, but yeah, we got a, a reef in the, two reefs in the main and two reefs, only one dot showing on the jib. So they're doing well. This is kind of becoming our standard sail configuration when the wind's in the 20s. Um, double reef main and jib seems to work pretty well. So up in that area is Piraeus and uh, further inland is Athens. There's a peninsula that kind of comes out here. We're cutting in between the peninsula and this island over here with all the windmills on it roughly halfway in between because straight ahead, whoa, straight ahead is Kia which is our destination for today. It's about 40 miles away from uh, Poros. We've got 25 more, to go. 25 more to go. This is, a, uh, according to people we've talked to, it is a Meltemi um, when the wind gets up to this strength and especially tomorrow and the next day, the next two days are really windy. And actually the boat is handling it great. It's just, you know, I'm not really fighting it. Every once in a while I'll, I'll feel the wave uh, come underneath the boat and hit the rudder, but it's really handling these waves terrific. So the wind's picked up to mid 20s now, and um, we have taken another reef in the jib. So we got three reefs in the jib, two in the main. Uh, we're kind of being prepared to do another reef in the main here shortly if this kind of holds But the triple reef in the main actually allowed us to point a little bit better uh, The unfortunate thing is we're getting a header So um, we're having a little harder time holding our course to our destination on Kia So our backup plan is to go to Kifnos uh, once we get around Once we get around the Georgios Island down over there you can see those ships in close. So, Kia's straight ahead, but we've got some leeway with all this wind and waves, so even though we're pointed to right about the middle of the island, we're kind of making a course over ground um, off the south tip of the island. So, good thing is we have options. We are doing uh, one hour watches today, and that's, uh, we find it's a good break. Um, for typically these kind of conditions where you're hand steering and it demands a lot of your attention. So um, Karen's on watch for another 10 minutes or so, then I go on watch for an hour. Um, it's not a lot of time to get something else done when you're off watch, but frankly it's kind of helpful to have somebody in the cockpit maybe trimming sails or keeping an eye out for things, but not having to, um, not having to fully pay attention at the wheel so that break is nice and uh, before you know it the hour's up and you get to switch up. So conditions have gotten a little, little bit worse. We started 
hitting a lot of waves, uh, more seas and uh, larger waves as we headed to Kia. So we made a decision to uh, alter course to Kifnos, which is about 30 degree uh, difference in course. And that made it a little bit easier. The, the uh, wind and the seas are now back to being a beam to us. Um, and, uh, but it does mean another, at least another hour further for us. So we're trying to make as fast progress as we can because the longer we're out here today, the higher the winds are going to be and the more the seas are going to build up. But it's pretty rough. And um, the boat was banging a lot and we were going upwind to Kia. Now we're um, mostly a beam to things, but we're getting some big white caps and some big waves. So I just changed watch and Karen's on now. So we're back to um, a third reef in the jib, and the main already had a, a third reef in it. So 29 knots, 29 knots of true wind speed. We had a 29 to 30 or so a little while ago. The middle of the Aegean Sea is dominated by strong northerly winds for most of the summer months, and this causes most cruisers to begin a sailing season as far north as they can get before winds make northward movement too uncomfortable. From their starting point, most cruisers move southeast and or southwest as they hop between islands. Since we were entering the Aegean in August and via the Corinth Canal, we were probably not going to see the islands to the north, at least not this sailing season. Given that and our plans to meet friends in Mykonos in a week's time, we hope to sail as close to directly east as we safely could. If we were lucky to get in a bit of northing, we might be able to make it to Andros or to Tinos, as is shown in these two options. However, given that we returned further south from Kia to Kithnos with today's winds, we will now shoot for our option two plan. Got a big wave coming here too. Yep. Be careful. Some waves like that, they just kind of roll under you, but this one, it's going to really toss us. <laughs> You're doing a great job there, Skipper. Thank you. A little scary, but it's holding together okay. We put some extra lashings on the dinghy. Uh, to kind of pull it in a little bit on the stern and another lashing on the uh, bow there to keep it from moving. So I think it's doing okay. But this is the sort of longest sustained high winds we've had on the boat. And on the off watch I get to sit in the comfort behind the Dodger and be pretty dry out of the wind. I just get to watch all the chaos going on. So we'll be happy in a couple hours when this is over. It was fun earlier. Now this is pretty rough and kind of the kind of conditions you sort of want to get through quickly and get over with. It's hard on the boat, hard on the people. See the crazy amount of white water behind us as we're going like eight to nine knots, kicking up our own mess of water. But uh, really enjoying the speed. We have about a mile to go before we get to the point and curve around the point right up ahead of us. Yeah. All right. We've come around the point, and uh, the wind got really fluky, strong, gusty, and shifty. So we decided to roll in the jib and uh, mode of the last mile or two in. So we are not too far away, angry and relaxing. Feel good to be close? Yeah, it feels good to be out of those tangy waves. Yeah, it's still windy. It was 30 knots a minute ago, now it's down to 20, but flat water, 
flat-ish water, lots of white caps. But uh, our anchors is just up here. We can be fine anchoring in 20, 25 knots of wind. Uh, the, the holding is reportedly very good here, so that's good news. Um, and if the water's flat and just windy, that's not a problem for us. It's when it's wind and waves when you're anchored, it's really hard. So, getting a little familiar here with Kifnos as we approach some stone walls, cliffs. So this would give you some good snorkeling if there was a light wind day. Once settled, we went ashore and hiked up to this small chapel, sitting alone atop the rustic and windswept hill. We took in the numerous stone walls and walking paths as we enjoyed the expansive views. We had heard there is a tiny hot spring in the outer harbor, so we'll walk along the far shore as well to see if we can locate that. bubbles all along this side too and a whole bunch over here. Look at all that. What point do you come become alarmed? <laughs> it's funny now over here it's completely dead. And it's active over there. The earth is alive for sure. at our little hot springs. Pretty cool to be able to go get in a little warm water next to the ocean or the water lapping up next to you at the beach. Very wonderful spot. Crossing the southern tip of uh, Kifnos, and uh, it's pretty rugged here. And we're going to come back around onto the eastern side and go up the eastern side and find a place to anchor for tonight. But it's rugged, barren. In the distance, you can see an island with a really sharp drop on the right side, another little island, too. Those are two small islands on the way to uh, Syros, which is where we're going to go probably tomorrow. Our overnight stop at the quiet harbor of Kanala provided us with an opportunity to stretch our legs and get a good night's rest. The town offered a couple of restaurants and not much else. More of those stone walls, walls as far as you can see. Little white stone huts over there too. It seems the local goat herders have a hard time keeping track of their animals. It's pretty hard to see them all with their opposite legs tied together so they couldn't jump over the stone walls. It's crazy because um, from the heat of the day, these stone walls, um, you know, soak up a lot of the heat. And uh, in the evening now, when the air is cooled down and it's not quite uh, as uncomfortable to walk around, you still get like heat radiating away from these uh, rocks because it was so warm during the day. Just another windy day out in the Kakladis. <laughs> doing about seven and a half knots and. Uh, 15 plus wind, 15, 18. Healed over pretty well. We got a little bit of a reef, kind of a half a reef in the jib. I'm seeing how that's doing. It's a little bit, a little bit on the edge. We should probably take another reef in if it holds like this. 
saying goodbye to Kifnos. We are moving on, going off to Syros as a stepping stone eventually to Mykonos. So no shortage of wind <laughs> in this part of Greece. Sometimes it's a little nicer up here on the high side, uh, but when the, we get a little bit more chop, we get sprayed with lots of seawater up here and you have to either go into below, behind the Dodger or steer from the lower helm station. But right now it's moderately smooth water. We've seen a lot worse. This is fairly early in the morning, so I'm sure it'll kick up into more seas later on today. But we got about uh, three hours to cross over, 20 mile crossing. Great view of the cliffs up here and the upwind side of our harbor we're coming into here. Not much longer, we'll be get the anchor down, get some lunch, a little rest maybe. So we're just entering our harbor here in Syros, a couple more boats than we're used to. Uh, not a problem, we'll find a place, there's plenty of space here, but you can tell this is a well sought after protected anchorage here. Yeah, the catamaran's definitely moving. Part of what gives it protection is not only because um, the wind's kind of coming down off the land here, but they've got this sort of man-made, sort of natural breakwater going over here. So it helps to keep surge from coming around the point there into the harbor. So very, very calm here. All right, we're saying goodbye to the harbor of Finicus up there. We've got, um, we weren't sure what kind of winds we were gonna face when we got underway here, but we've got 20 to 25 knots of wind. Um, it was completely calm and quiet overnight. Point of land up here, this is the very southern part of Cirrus here. We're gonna round this point along with the sailboat here. Getting the gusts and puffs of wind off of uh, this sort of downside of the island of Ciro, so it's pretty steep cliffs over there. We got kind of becalmed about 10 to 11 knots. Now we're up to 18, sometimes 20 knots. So a little puffy here, but it's a good, it's a good wind angle, which is allowing no us seas, to, really. and yeah, no seas. So that uh, helps the boat out a lot. All right, we're approaching Ormos Veris. Ormos Veris on the um, kind of eastern side of Syros. And I think it's pretty likely we're gonna stop here for the night. So, it's a little view of it here. We got some great rocky cliff areas here maybe to explore in the dinghy, snorkel around. Another one on the right-hand side entering. And uh, this bay is very, um, very well situated in that you drive quite a ways up inside to get shallow um, areas to anchor in. Behind me is another one of those mini Gibraltar rocks. The, uh, they're all little siblings of the actual Gibraltar rock. So we're on a run from uh, Syros over to Renea, uh, about 13 miles, and um, pretty gusty out here. It's blowing right now at about 20 knots and uh, gusting to 25. We got double reefs in the main and jib, and the wind is just off a close haul. We're about 60 degrees up here. Um, so we should be there in a couple hours. It's fairly stable. As we uh, pass the island here, we're getting a little bit more seas, probably less protection from both that island and also from the larger Syros. We're kind of a little bit more out there. Upwind of us up there is Tinos. 
and uh, we have a, a little bit more seas to contend with here, but the boat's still doing pretty well. By mid-afternoon, we were on anchor on the west side of Renea. As you can see, this barren island has several isolated coves to tuck into. While any of these three coves on the northern side would have worked, we picked the one furthest in and where we might be alone. There are very little inhabitants on the island. From what we can tell, it's only the people that tend to the sheep herds. Enjoy the views of this simple yet beautiful spot. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get notified of new videos. Join us next time as we spend a windy couple of days along the south coast of Mykonos then explore the archaeological gem of next door Delos before making our way to the wonderful island of Paros. Thanks for watching!